Hello Year 12 Global Politics. Today what I will be covering is hard power and soft power and we'll be talking about some examples of them. When you are talking about hard and soft power you could be asked specifically for an example of hard power or an example of soft power or you may need to be able to talk about you know, political, diplomat diplomatic, military, cultural or economic and talk about whether it's hard or soft. Um, so it is important to probably understand what it actually means. So what I'm going to go through though are the definitions of hard power and soft power. So hard power is power exercised through incentive or coercion. So it's threats or it's the you know, it carrot and stick. For those of you that aren't sure what carrots and sticks are, basically the carrot is you know, something that's enticing, something that's going to convince you to do it, whereas a stick is poking you and prodding you to do something. And the incentive or the co coercion will influence the actions of global actors. There's lots of different ways where it can be used. You know, it can be used through diplomatic, military or economic kinds of power. Lots and lots of different examples. The most, e the easiest one to see with hard power is threat or use of or you know threats or use of force against states you know the militarization of the south china sea um, could be an example of one economically you could probably say something like china's sanctions or tariffs placed on australia could be seen as hard economic power that they were trying to coerce australia to you know withdraw some of their the, the desire to have an inquiry about the origins of COVID. So, you know, we can see here that there's incent that they, they were trying to coerce Australia. Whereas soft power is when you are trying to shape actions of states through attraction by showing them what is good. So it's trying to persuade countries, trying to convince them to, to follow them. And there's no coercion, there's no incentive well, there may be an incentive, I think, but it probably won't be, you know, you won't be threatened to do it. To do it. It's more like both of you are winning in this situation. You are both going to gain from it. What's different about soft power is that it is, you know, probably seen a bit more subtly. And what's, I think, tricky about a country like China is that nothing that they do is subtle. Everything has a purpose. Everything that they are trying to do, you know, there's, there's always a reason why they are doing it. But soft power traditionally is meant to be, you know, seen as being persuasive, trying, trying to, you know, attract you to, to do what they want. And that's why I think Confucius Institutes are an example of soft power, because they are trying to show you what's positive about their country, you know, teach you about their language and their history. And it's, it's showing you what's attractive about their country. It's going to convince you to to learn about them and see them in a positive way because of the great things that they're teaching about you. You're not being prodded and poked into doing it. You're not being incentivized with, you know, a carrot, but you are being shown what's positive about their country because they are showing you, you know, the great things about it. So I hope that was helpful in kind of briefly summarizing what hard and soft power are. Like I said, you could be asked specifically about hard and soft power or you may talk about it when you're talking about you know, military power and you may describe something as military hard power or military soft power. So, hope that was helpful and I will see you later. Bye.